want to share with you yeah. and your family, your family. The love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God. With one touch, ministries, we're touching hearts and changing lives. Judgment Day, the books 
will open. And if your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and then that means that you're on your way to hell, on your way to destruction, on your way to damnation. And so then God is saying that you have to be able to accept him and live a God-fearing life so that not only when you get to heaven, you get to stay in heaven. He'll be able to say, How, uh, welcome home, my good and faithful servant. And so I just wanted to let everybody know that when you hear people saying uh, they're resting in Abraham's bosom, they're not resting in Abraham's bosom. They're in hell. Come on, come on, come on. There is no more of that. Jesus has given us the guarantee that when we die, we'll go to heaven. And there's another guarantee that's at the end of the book that says that when, we, that, that, um, when he returns... The Bible says that he's coming back for a church without spot and wrinkle. And then the dead in Christ shall rise again. And then after the millennium reign and everything of that nature, what's going to happen is that God then is going to throw this earth that we're living in into the lake of fire. And then come down a new heaven and a new earth. So we're going to reign and we're going to live not on this earth, but there is another promised earth that we're going to live in. So listen, that's not what my message is about on today. Today we're talking about that you're going to live to see it happen. Just type that in the comments and say, you're going to live to see it happen. So I encourage you just, for those of you who did not catch that, make sure you check out last week's message. But on today... The promises of God are yes and amen. And so we all know what the word yes means. If my child was to come to me and say, hey, dad, can I get this? Can I get that? And I'll say yes. But the Bible says that uh, God says that the promises that he has given you are yes and amen. That means yes, you can have it. And it is so. That's what the word amen means. And so God actually does a double guarantee on the things that he said that he has promised you. Again, a guarantee is simply a promise someone has given you and that you're waiting for it to be fulfilled. Um, many of us have, um, many of you who are listening under the sound of my voice may have had promises that have not yet come to pass. And so you have to be able to know that God is about to bring those things to pass for you in this time. And so then, um, so honey, I'm just here to tell you that if the man gave you a promise ring to get ready, girl, you're probably getting ready to get married. Uh, if you've been waiting to save up for your car, then I want everybody to go out this week to take a step of faith and be able to say, hey, listen, I'm looking for a new car. Step out this week because God is guaranteeing you that you're going to have the car. You have been um, hurting in your body, and I want you to believe God for the healing in your body because God has made a guarantee that he's going to heal your body on today. God has given us a promise. God has given us promise in his word, and sometimes due to the lack of faith or due to broken promises in our life, we tend to not believe that God is going to do it or it's not going to happen for us. God, and then we think in our mind, well, maybe uh, 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 I'm not worthy of it. It must have been something that I've done, the reason why I haven't gotten it yet. Uh, 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 maybe I've lived too long or maybe I wasn't holy enough to get it, to be able to have it. But we've experienced so many broken promises in our life, it leads us to broken dreams. Yes, come on, Pastor. Come on. Uh, broken promises in marriage. We have broken promises in our relationships. We have broken promises in our jobs. Uh, we have broken promises because we were uh, promised promotions. We have broken promises about money. We have broken promises about commitments. Uh, we have broken promises when you miss a deadline, that's a broken promise. Uh, food quality when you go out to the restaurant is a broken promise because you show us like, man, I wanted something real good to 
eat. And then when the quality of food ain't there, that's a broken promise. The quality of food. Not paying someone back, that's a broken promise. Any delivery service that you may have that it's been late, you want it on time. And Amazon, if they run a little late, it's a broken promise. Any delivery service, you may have UPS. You've been waiting on the UPS man, but it still ain't delivered your work practice. That's a broken promise. You've been waiting for DoorDash to deliver your food, and you said they was gonna be here at 725. And it's 8 o'clock right now. It has been a broken promise. Those are just some examples of the broken promises. Hallelujah. All examples of broken promises. So as you think about some of your broken promises today. Thank you. So as you think about some of the broken promises today, we are here to break it in Jesus' name. Some of the promises that you have had, that, that you have in your life, it has to be broken today. So, uh, so, so let me just give you some examples of some of the broken promises that has happened in my life. I'll just say it like Vicky Wine said. She said, I've been lied on, and I've been cheated and talked about and mistreated. And I've been puked and scorned all of all, all, my God. Hallelujah. She said, I've been lied on, talk, talked and talked about me. And they didn't talk about me real bad. But I'm here to tell you that God has, has faith. Glory to God. Given me a promise. I've been cheated on. I know it was a broken promise, but we're here to break it in the name of Jesus. Been mistreated. And we break it right now in the name of Jesus. But today I'm here to break the cycle of defeat. Every chain of worry, every cycle of worry, every cycle of despair, every cycle of happiness, every cycle of doubt. The Hezekiah, the old, if you remember that old Hezekiah Walker song, he said this. And look like my, my tablet, it won't mess up on me. I'll say it again. Listen, okay? Listen, that old Hezekiah Walker song, it said this. It said, why should I worry and why should I fret? Yes. Everything that God has promised me, it has come to pass. I'm here to tell you today that every single promise that God is going to give to you on today, he said he's going to bring it to pass. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, that the devil is a liar, and the truth is an enemy. So we believe that God is going to allow this word for them to come forth, but I'm here to tell you on today that I have this word so up to me, I probably don't need it. God is going to allow you to be able to have things happen in your life. You thought that you was going to feel like that you were going to die, but God has said that you're not going to die, but you're going to live. You're going to live to see that thing happen. You're going to live to be able to see your child be able to walk. You're going to be able to live to see that your child is going to walk across that stage. You feel like that you have cancer in your body. And I'm here to tell you today that God said that you're going to live to see it happen. This isn't the time for you to break down. And this isn't the time for you to be out. You feel like that you're broke, busted, and disgusted. I'm here to tell you today that God is about to do great things for you in your life. So, and so I want you to believe God. And I want you to be able to receive what God is going to be able to do for you in your life. I don't know what's going on in your life right now, but you've got to believe the promises of God. And the promises of God are yes, amen. He said in the book of Malachi, he said, once you pour out, once you pay your tithes and offering, he said, see that I have, uh, I will pour out blessings that you don't have enough room to receive it. Uh, Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What is the thing that you, you want God to do for you in your life? What is the thing that you want God to be able to enhance 
for you in your life. You want to be married? Well, listen, believe God for it. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, Call on me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you don't even know of. So I dare for you right now in the name of Jesus. Begin to call on the name of the Lord. Because the name of the Lord is a strong power. The name of the Lord is mighty. The name of the Lord is mighty in battle. So I'm here today to encourage on today that you're going to live to see it happen. You may feel like that you've been down and out, and you feel like Jesus is not going to bring you out. But I'm here today to tell you that God is going to bring you out. He's going to pick you up out of the muck and the mire and flesh. And I want you right now to believe God. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 1, have faith in God. Hallelujah. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And so on today, and the Bible says in verse 6, is that you, if you were to not have faith in God, then if you have, don't have faith in God, it doesn't please God. And so I'm here to say today, have faith in God because he's going to do it. And only God can do it. Only God can raise your situation up. Only God can turn your situation around. Only God can touch that wayward child. Only God can bring about salvation. We're believing God for salvation to any friend and loved one that you may be praying for. And we thank you, Lord, for doing great things in the midst of your people. You have people that have broken promises, and they feel like they're not going to go anywhere. But I'm here to say it today that those broken promises, we are cutting it right now in the name of Jesus. Say you have no power, you have no dominion. You have to be turned back sevenfold. Every single thing that you were supposed to have that you that we had. So we turn it back. I want it all back. What about your family? I want it back. What about your kids? I want them back. What about your family? I want them back. The Bible says that the kingdom of God suffers violence. And the violence taken by force. I take the nice. Declare war on the enemy of today. You shall not have my family. I shall not die, but I shall live to declare the works of the Lord. David said, I'm going to live to see it happen. And I'm going to declare the works of the Lord. Every single thing that I've been going through in my life, I should have been dead. Sleeping in my grave. And you told death to stand back and behave. Yes, I've done some bad things in my life. Yes, I've done some awful things in my life. And sometimes I felt like I should have been dead. But I'm here to tell the devil today that I cancel your assignment. I cancel the assignment of the enemy. I need you to put that in the comment box. And I want you to say, Satan, I cancel your assignment. I cancel the assignment that I was going to kill myself. Every suicidal thought, I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. The spirit of worry, I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. The spirit of suicide, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. The spirit of homicide, you're scared to take your children to school. And you're worried about if your kids are going to make it back home. But I cancel the assignment of the enemy right now. In the name of Jesus. You said that I'm not going to make it. And I'm not going to worry about it. I'm here to reflect today that you're going to live to see it happen. You're going to see the new house. You're going to see the new car. You're going to see how your child, you're going to see them. They may be overseas, but I'm here to tell you today that you're going to live to see it happen. You're going to live to see them again. You may be in your hospital bed right now. You may be laid up right now. But you're going to live to see it happen. You ought to thank God that you have the activities of your limbs. You ought to thank God 
that you can walk, that you can talk, and let God keep you out your back. Come on, let me hear somebody say, God got my back. It may seem like that I'm up against the wall. It seems like the enemy got me torn. But I'm here to tell you that praise. There's a praise on the inside, from the inside of my heart. And when I begin to praise, the enemy has to flee. The enemy can't live in a position where the praise is going. So I lift up my head and I look to the hills. From this coming my help, and all my help coming from the Lord. I don't know about you, and I know that the devil is a lie on the dead. But the Bible says that the promises of God are yes and amen. God gave a promise that you see in the sky that every time it rains, it's a rainbow in the sky. And God made the promise and said that I'll never flood the earth again. But I'm here to tell you today, although it may be raining in my life, it seems like the water keeps going up and up and up. But the Bible says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, Oh, I'm going to lift up a standard. Oh, I'm going to lift up a standard. Oh, I'm going to lift up a standard. And that standard means that I won the battle. That standard means that I won the war. That standard means that I have the victory. I got the V I C T O R Y. I got the victory. I got the victory. One more time again. I got the V I C T O R Y. I got the victory. Satan, you can't discourage me no more. I felt like that I was going to lose my mind. But I'm here today to tell you, Satan, I'm not going to lose my mind. I'm going to be able to live and declare the works of the Lord. Excuse me, Satan. No dominion. Excuse me, Satan. You have no power. Excuse me, haters. You can say what you want to say, but I already got the victory. Excuse me. I know in whom I serve, and I know in whom I believe, and I'm going to believe, and I'm going to live to see it happen. I'm not going to die. That you're not going to die, but you're going to live to see your grandchildren get old. You're going to live to get the new car. You're going to live. I want you to type in the comment section and say, I'm going to make it. I feel like I wasn't going to make it. Oh, hallelujah. Even if I made my bed in hell, God said I'm still with you. Sometimes I feel like throwing in the towel, but I'm here to say today, Sinner, I'm not going to throw in the towel, I'm not going to quit, I'm not going to resign, I'm not going to walk out, I'm not going to take my own life, I'm not taking somebody else's life, although I may have kept life, taking that Negro's life, but I'm not going to do it, because I've got something to live for. To see it happen, we've been made to work for just one night. The joy comes in the morning. I may have felt like that I was sad, but joy comes in the morning. I may have felt like that I was gonna lose my mind, but joy comes in the morning. I may have 
I stretched myself out to the chest. Uh, then I felt like pulling my hair out. Uh, but I'm here to be placed today. So I'm going to skip on this one. I'm going to leap for this one. And I'm 
little David. And little David, he uh, doesn't sleep well at nighttime. He usually don't go to bed until 5 o'clock in the morning. So we've been praying for little David. I saw Miss Yolanda, she posted, as soon as the live came on, she gave a testimony and said, little David is sleeping at night now.
And we're going to continue to stand in faith. Have trust and believe that God is going to do it. Only God can do it for us. If we, I don't know if Mr. Henry, Mr. Henry got a chance to post the... Mr. Henry, can you post in the chat the Malachi scripture? The Malachi scripture. Make an investment. 
into the kingdom. And when I, when, when I do investments, when I sow into my 401k plan later on in life, or if I happen to have an emergency, I can go into my investment and pull it out. So this is why we said we, you're investing into the kingdom of God. Because why? You're investing into God. Not to Shannon, not to Nadisha. You're investing into God. You're planting that seed. And what happens with that seed? In order for a seed to grow, it must first die. So the seed that you plant first dies. Dies, it spreads itself, and then it begins to spread. You water it, make sure you're getting your sunlight, and then it grows. Some of you have planted seeds into one such ministry. Let me tell you something. I thank you guys. This this past Friday, people were so. You have no clue. How much a blessing to the ministry that was. And I just want to publicly say to each and every last person, I thank you. you. Your investment into the kingdom. Now, God is going to do this. He said he's about to open yes. the floodgates of heaven. He's going to pour you out blessings that you don't have enough room enough to receive it. When when, when you fill your cup up, and if you fill your cup up to overflowing, we call that a mess. But when God fills up your cup to overflowing, He calls that a blessing. So I just want to encourage anybody here on today, I didn't, because my whole message wasn't about. You know, tithing was since we didn't do our tithing offerings earlier today. I just want to say again, thank you in advance for investing into the kingdom of God. Also, there's ways to give. You can give by Cash App. Again, this is our sign, One Touch M. This is the church's Cash App. This isn't our purpose. We got personal Cash Apps. <laughs> personal money. The money that's given to One Touch Ministries, we use that for ministry. Hey, we gotta pay for this building that we use from week to week. Come on, week to week. <laughs> week to week, we have to pay for this. You, you can go ahead, yes, ma'am. Excuse my city. You know what's all right? But people sometimes don't quite understand. Week to week, we have to make sure that the building is taken care of. Week to week, we have to make sure that the rent is paid. We can't slide because we're anointed. You can't slide because you can prophesy. Come on. Come on. And you can't slide because we in love with one another. The bills still got to get paid. We're not going to beg. We're not going to plead. Right. But we're going to ask yeah. for people to sell. For the ones that sold on Friday, when I tell you, you blessed the kingdom of God, seriously. If I could take the time to share, <laughs> yes. if I just could take the time to share, I'm yes. not going to take the time today, but I'm just saying in general, if I could have taken the time to share yes. the miracle, yes. the miracle that was given to bless the house of God, not our house. Yes. So when Pastor Shannon said, I will eat ramen noodles and hot dogs. <laughs> Come on. Let me just tell them that part. Okay. Yes, ma'am. When you say, Pastor, mm -hmm. I will eat ramen noodles and hot dogs, mm -hmm. because I'm guaranteed the promise. Well, that's what we've been eating. Ramen noodles and sausages. Ramen noodles. Ramen noodles. Come on. Ramen noodles. Come 
job and payment from his, his pay from his job. The Holy Ghost, when we moved here, I couldn't bring those businesses with me. So I have to start from scratch. But let me tell you something. I've been here for almost six months, going on seven months. Yeah. And let me tell you something. God supplied every one of our needs. God has been taking care of us. And I said, all right, God. I said, he said, Detroit, you're employed by me. I, I got to see about you. For real, for real, for the last seven months, now Deetra really has not been working. Has not been working. Has not been receiving a steady paycheck. But let me tell you something about God. He's made sure our rent has been paid and the church rent has been paid. Churches have been established. My God from Zion. So we have five churches. Five churches. And I just want to say this really quick so people will know is that we don't do like a lot of preachers, pastors, and people that you may see online give $150, give $1,500. If you want to be blessed, send us $2,000 check and all the other kind of stuff. You better preach, pastor. <laughs> what did we see the other night? Yes. A young lady, she's on live. Talks on hundred fifty dollars. Yes. Uh, hold on. What she said? Hundred fifty dollars. She has she, she had. all your money sitting up there with her gold teeth in her mouth, sitting up with her gold plaque and her gold, her gold uh, um, bed frame. Her husband got gold black teeth. I mean, y'all, y'all gotta stop being fooled by the enemy. That's so true. I told my, my uh, Pastor Shannon said. He said. You know what? I blame the people who are fooled by this mess. He said, I blame them. He said, I understand what you're saying. It's a sad situation that she pulling on people like this. She literally has a climb up. And I, some of y'all, y'all probably know her. I ain't going to call her name out. But you know, when she got gold teeth, now she got the veneer teeth. That's the fake new, brand new, crispy white teeth that she got in my mouth this week. $1,500 off her. Not, not only that, remember the, the video you showed me? The lady told us, I'm believing God for my marriage, and the preacher told her to give $888. I did, I did, and she gave $188, and the girl told her, and the reason why I'm calling her the girl, because ain't no real prophet of God gonna tell you this. She said, I can't go to God empty handed, so you gotta make another seat offer of $1,500. I can't go to God for you empty handed, and I'm not praying for you for no marriage. Oh, wait, did she, she called herself the world, the world priest or something? She like called herself the world priest. Let me tell y'all something. Don't be fooled by the enemy in this season. Do not be fooled by the enemy in this east season. Y'all are being fooled. Some of you are being fooled. And let me tell you something. Some of y'all are being fooled right now, and you are knowing that you're being fooled. But because your pride, because your pride is so strong, Strong. You won't even allow God to pull you out because you don't want everybody to know you got fooled again. Huh? But God told me to tell you, if you go to him and ask for repentance and ask God to deliver you, he said, I'll pull you out of the pit again. See, one thing I love about God, he don't hold our mistakes over us. People hold mistakes over us. But God don't hold no mistakes over us. But God told me to tell you, some of y'all are being so prideful. Y'all yourself because you got fooled again. You got fooled again. But I'm here to tell you something today. But God told me to tell you. He said I can get you out of the pit if you will step out on faith. I'm not talking about no seed. I'm talking about step out on faith. Get your rusty dusty knees on your floor and begin to say God to do that, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. We're so prideful. Pride. Don't let pride. Mm -hmm. What does the word say? Pride comes before the what? Oh. Don't allow pride to make you fall again. Oh. 
God said, I'll pull you. Some of you that are watching, some of you will watch the replay. Some of y'all in and out. But let me tell you something. You've been fooled again. Jesus. He shot the leader that you thought you had. Fooled you again. And God told me to tell you. He said, I'll pull you out of the pit again. He said, but I need you to come to me correct. You to get on your rusty, dusty knees, get on your face, put your babbling lips on the floor, and begin to cry out to me. He said, Because why? He said, I'm God, and besides, there is no other. Y'all are making people your God. God is saying, I'm tired of idols. God said, This is not an idol season. Years ago, 
He said, I have anointed you to go places that your mother and father could never go into. I anointed you to go into territories that your mother and father would not be able to go into. Miss Anna is um, my best friend um, from childhood, Miss Katie. <laughs> Miss Kate, she's a beautiful makeup artist in Philadelphia. She's very successful. I praise God for her. So me and Katie grew up together in the same church. Her mother would come visit time to time. But Miss Anna always knew that my mother and father had a church. And, you know, and this went on and on and on. And basically, she, she never really joined, but she always would come and support and be a part of. Uh-huh. Well, Miss Anna is allowing... My husband and I to pastor her. She wants to be a part of one such ministry. And I praise God because she's one of the people that God told me that was going to come in. That's one of the territories. That's one of the places, one of the people that my mother and father could not reach. Wow. Even though they had a ministry for over 40 years. Wow. Yes, my mother's still running that ministry. But I learned just because people have been doing something for 40 years doesn't mean they've been doing it right the whole time. God said, I'm raising up new generation for people to reach certain people that the old folks could reach up. Because sometimes we put our, we put too much stipulations on people. We put too many issues on people. We took, put too many ends and don'ts and this and that and rules and regulations instead of teaching the word of God and allowing the word of God to do the correction. And a lot of times with that, that pushes people away. But I in the spirit, but God has allowed me to grow up wow. to be able to lead a woman that I knew when I was a child. Wow. So I'm grateful for that, Pastor. Wow. A lot of people that left my mother and father's church, they don't, people don't know, we're pastors. Yeah, yeah. Brother Fish. Come on. This one. Come on. That. Come on. A lot of people, a lot, a lot of uh, my family members. Well, they're not Listen. special members, but they still go back and watch the teachings and the preaching. Listen, Pastor Shannon, we go to Michigan and over 100, 150 family members, they follow our ministry. We don't see, you fail to realize a lot of times people don't always become official members, but they're partners. Come on, partners. They're partners with us. Pastor Shannon pastors his whole entire family. You preached your mother's funeral, and everybody got up and said, now that's what I want. Can you do that for me when I go? I mean, your family, every last one of them came up to me and said, now that's what I want when I leave here. Shannon, you got the, they don't even call you pastor, they just Shannon, Shannon, I need you to preach like that for when I go. Shannon, preach like that when I go. Come on. Jesus, I, I'm done. <laughs> well, listen, I'm so excited. Listen, I just want to leave out on the praise today. Y'all don't mind. So we got new members classes on tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. via Zoom. Tuesday, we have Prophetic Sound with Prophetess, the International Prophetess, Nadisha Young. Wednesday, we're having Bible Trivia Night. Meet us on Zoom with that. Friday, we have another prophetic sound. Saturday night. Saturday night live with Mr. Henry Jackson. We're going to preach the word of God. We're taking the summer off for Wednesday night Bible study. Hey, 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 hey. And then we're here every Sunday afternoon. 3 o'clock p.m. Glory to God. I don't know if y'all ready for this one though. But 